Hello everybody, my name is John and in this video we're going to be checking out how to paint Tesla for the Union faction from the two-player starter box for Wild West Exodus. Now, this video is also going to contain a lot of information for new time or even first time painters and hobbyists, so if you're experienced, do feel free to move on and get straight into the painting segment of the video. However, you guys that are new to the hobby, welcome. It's a very interesting and very fun place to be. And um, we're going to be covering a few things like uh, tools that uh, you might want to pick up if this is your first time, uh, how primers work, selecting primers, and then also doing something that will really help you uh, throughout your entire painting time, which is called Zenith highlighting. And we're going to be looking at that uh, during the priming process. However, if you're already experienced, do skip ahead and let's get stuck in. What I want to start off with is a little bit of um, demystifying some aspects of the hobby for you as a new person. Uh, and that's mainly the talk that you'll find online or in Facebook groups or something like that, where they're talking about what tools you need, what things you must be doing. Uh, there'll be a lot of talk about things like airbrushing, dry brushing, uh, wet blending, all these different techniques and different types of jargon and stuff like that. And it can get overwhelming for a new hobbyist. So what, what we want to try and avoid is a situation like this. Typically, all you need to get started into miniature painting is a small set of brushes, typically from a size double zero to a size two. This can provide you for everything that you need and a glass of water. There is one other piece of equipment that I would recommend, and that is called a wet palette. So let's move this stuff over out of the way. A wet palette is basically a palette that you put paint on, except it's wet. So what's so special about that? Well, the idea behind a wet palette is that you have this paper, which is greaseproof paper or baking paper, on top of a couple of layers of sponge. You put some water into this, it's nice and damp. You then take some paper, and lay it over the top. This piece of equipment provides you with a way of keeping paint that you've already removed from your bottle wet and keepable. So if you're mixing paints or you're using, you have a large puddle of it here, for example, when you're finished with your painting for the day, chuck the lid on, snap it down, leave it overnight, come back, remove the lid, the paint is still ready to use. So it's something that a lot of painters recommend, and I would recommend you do it as well. There's plenty of tutorials to make your own out of takeaway tubs, but there's plenty of products available online that you're able to buy as well. So that is the basics of what you need to paint. Obviously, get a little bit of um, a kitchen roll or something like that as well to dry your brushes on. You'll see as we move on through if there's anything else in here that has mentioned that you feel like you need. So at this point, we're going to start talking about priming. So priming a miniature before painting it is something that a lot of people do but don't quite understand or some people just forego it completely. I see a lot of beginners in particular just putting paint straight onto bare plastic without any sort of preparation. Now, priming is an important step. It is always generally the first step of painting a miniature. But what does it do? Why is it important? And why are there so many options? Well, for a start, let's have a look at this stuff. So this is Citadel Color Chaos Black. This is a spray paint. I'm using this to represent all sort of aerosol can primer paint. So primer paint is really a particular formula of paint that once it is settled onto a miniature, it uh, gives you a slightly porous surface that allows paint to adhere to it, so all your subsequent layers. It also has a high adhesive quality to it, so it will stick to the material of your miniature and make it a little bit more robust. It also gives you a clean surface for when you're applying your other paints. So we have aerosol primers as one option. We also have, if you're feeling uh, particularly fancy, airbrush primer. Airbrush primer does essentially the same job, it can be a little bit cheaper. A bottle this size could do you hundreds of miniatures with an airbrush, as opposed to maybe 30, 40 miniatures with a regular aerosol can. 
performs the same basic function as the aerosol, except it's not quite as robust once it's down on the miniature and dry. It can rub off, but once you have your miniature painted and you've put a varnish over the top of it, there's really not much of a difference uh, between its longevity between it and the aerosol. So the next stage then, once you have your miniature primed in one of these choices, basically aerosol or not, you hear a lot of people talk about Zenith. So what the heck is a Zenith? Well, for example, we're going to put in another aerosol can here, which is Citadel Color Grey Seer. This is a lighter color than Chaos Black. Funnily enough, it even shows you on the tin. Very handy. So what is Zenithing? Zenithing is essentially forcing light and shadow onto the miniature. It's a little bit difficult to explain. So when we get to the priming stage, you will actually see what we're talking about. But in essence, it makes the higher parts of a miniature brighter and leaves the black, for example, in our scenario here, in the shadow areas. That gives the paint that you're applying something to work with. So when you're painting with a nice thin paint, the lighter or the higher details retain a bit more brightness because of the lighter undercoat, while the shadowy details retain the darker uh, properties of the black. So without further ado, let's go and prime our miniature. So to begin priming the model, what I've first done is place the miniature onto this little holder here, which you'll see being used throughout the video. And it's just a simple little rotator at the top with a bit of uh, putty underneath it that sticks to the base. That allows us to manipulate the model any way we want. So we're starting with our black primer and we're going to be applying it in very gentle layers. So we're going to start the spray off the model and then move across the miniature like that. We don't want to start or end the spray over the miniature because that can sometimes cause a little bit of spitting from the can and would leave us a bad surface. So from here, we're just going to uh, take the miniature and just start applying our black. We want to start by aiming up at the miniature from underneath. That way we're getting all of the black paint in the areas we really need it to before we go on to our zenith and apply a lighter coat from the other end. I should also mention at this point that rubber gloves are handy, not necessary, but do help keep your hands clean while you're doing this process as well. And as you can see with each pass, I'm rotating the model a little bit just to make sure we get every angle possible. And that's all the low angles done, so we can now do it from the top as well. Same process, starting the spray from off the miniature and moving across. With that done, we're now going to wait about 10 or 15 minutes just to make sure that the paint is actually dry and then we can move on to our zenith. So with the black paint now dry, we're going to be introducing some grey here, and this is going to be used for our zenith. Now zenithing is basically just a top down spray with a lighter coat of paint. What this is going to do is because we're going to be using a lot of contrast paints for our main colour in particular, it's going to give us a shade, it's going to give us a pre-shade, a lighter on the top and a darker on the bottom. It forces a bit of shadow and forces a bit of depth onto the miniature and you'll see that as we paint it that that will uh, progress and give us a nice finish with essentially not a lot of effort. So we're going to start with our grays here and the first thing we want to do is take the can at roughly a 45 degree angle to the miniature. Again using it in the same way that we did with the black paint originally, just not as heavy. We're going to start to spray. So just one or two passes and that picks up a lot of the top or the higher details. And to finish that off, we can just point the model straight towards ourselves, bring our can in and just do a couple of passes from a straight top down angle.
And that is how you use Zenith a miniature using rattle cans. So now that we have this done, we're going to let it dry. Again, another 10, 15 minutes or so. And then we're going to move on and start to actually paint um, our guy up. So with our miniature now primed, our miniature Zenith highlighted as well, we can now get to the hobby desk, we can break out the paints and we can start painting Tesla. So we can now see our primed and zenith Tesla sat ready for our first layers of paint. So the first thing we're going to do is use a Citadel contrast color called Talisar Blue. It's going to this is going to perform the the use of a base coat, which is going to cover practically most of the armor that he's wearing, uh, and will allow us to get our main color down and uh, work well with that. So what we're going to see is when we apply this, we're going to see the use of contrast paint alongside a zenith highlight. So we've primed black, we've zenith with a light grey, we're now putting this blue over the top. This is going to sit transparent, but also going to help shade into lower parts of the miniature. So we're going to shake that up because uh, contrast paint does need a good shake. And I'm going to take a fairly decent sized brush. I'm going to use a uh, size one brush I'll do this time. And I'm going to apply some of that paint to my wet palette. So I've just put it into the corner there it's just to keep it uh, there and we get a nice consistent amount on the brush. So what I'm aiming to do here is pick out all the pieces of armor. Uh, I'm going to leave bits down here which look like they'd be more mechanical jointy parts. We're not going to touch those but we're not too worried about hitting some of the other details, which I know we're going to be base coated later. So let's go for it. And what I'm doing is applying the Talisar Blue almost like a regular paint, but we only really need to make one pass with the brush. We're just going to put it into everything here on the chest. Leave out some of these joints here and not go over the edges of each plate. So we're going to do this and we'll show you what one decent pass with a contrast paint, not going too heavy, not going too light, how that looks once it's dry and we get to see what the, um, the Zenith priming and highlighting has done for us. With our Talisar blue applied and dry, we can see what the Zenith uh, priming and highlighting has done for us in, in um, conjunction with our contrast paint. So what the contrast paint is doing is as it settles its pigment goes to the lower details. So for up here example on the collar the darker part of the paint is settling in around the base part of this ridge and also is clinging to these chest details, these vents and around some of the rivets as well as clinging to some of the, the details up on his shoulder. The most important thing though is that we get this fade from areas that have high light saturation, so up here on his thigh, on the shoulders, the upper arms, and then it fades because more of the black is becoming visible. It fades down and starts to give us these little edge highlights, but then starts to fade down into these darker blues uh, as the model becomes darker, has more black paint prevalent in those areas. Same again on the back. You can see that this, the back of this leg, this calf here, is picking up a lot of light but here as well, on the back of his thigh, it's getting a little less. And then on right on his backside, it gets a little less uh, right down to the bottom of this plate. And again, you can see that happening on the arms. That's, in my opinion, the best way to use contrast paint is to zenith your model black through to a light grey or a white, and then apply it in a, a decently sort of thin but to medium coat, and you get the best use uh, out of the paint doing that. Now, with that said, we're going to move on to our next contrast paint. And this one is going to be Basilicanum Grey. This is a very dark grey. I'm going to be using that just to fill in uh, some dark spots here. So in between his armour plate, so down in here, down in to the joints in and around his hip. There's one in the back of the knee and under the arms. So again, shake it up. Open the pot, hopefully without spilling it absolutely everywhere. I'm going to set it on my wet palette for this and take some out and put it onto the palette. And the reason we do uh, the paint onto the palette is that it allows us to control how much of the paint is on the brush. We don't want too much and we don't want too little. So we're just going to go around the model and pick out all these areas that we want to be a little darker. 
With the Basilicanum grey now dry, we can check out what we've done. And it's just a few lower detail areas just to add to the, uh, the contrast between the dark areas and the blue. So with those areas now down, we're going to start looking at some brighter colours. And the first one we're going to be looking at is a brass. This is going to do our gold details. And we're using a Vallejo model colour brass because I really like Vallejo metallics. If, you've, if you're new to painting, Vallejo are a really good paint brand. Highly recommended for their, their standard paint range, their game paint range. They do a lot of good stuff for historicals as well. So we're going to take some of our brass, put it into our palette. And this is a lovely metallic to use. And what we're going to be doing with this is basically just picking out some areas uh, that we want. So let's just, we've put a bit of water onto our brush and then we're just dragging it along and curling it a little just to get a nice fine point. And we're going to pick out areas that we want uh, to have some brass detail. So what I'm going to be doing is the banding on his belt, including this big central piece here. So we'll be painting that in. We'll also probably take in the outer ring, at least, of this chest piece. Quite Iron Man-esque, that design, so I want to show that off a little bit. Now, obviously, I'm, this isn't the final coat, so we're going to be tidying that up later. Uh, we'll probably do a lot of the filigree up here on the shoulder as well. So some of these little markings and these little central pieces here. Uh, not sure about the edges. I think we'll probably do them in brass, but we also have these little extra plate pieces here, which I'm probably going to do in a silver, uh, as well as these large pieces on his gauntlets. I think that whole area is going to go our goldy brass color. I'll probably take these large pieces here on the top of the fist, turn them into silver later on. So it's just going to be a matter of going around the model picking out anything we feel like we want uh, to be in this brass colour. And then when we come back, we can do the same again, but only with the silver. So with the brass down and now dry, let's have a look at the amount that we've decided to pick out. And we have went with quite an, a fairly large amount of the brass all over the miniature. Uh, this is going to be counteracted with um, the silver that we're going to be putting on soon. It's going to brighten them all up a little bit and then of course later on we'll probably be darkening it down a little bit too so we're not going to be doing a huge amount of work we're just going to be adding colors and then shading them down but the next thing i want to move on to is his skin now he only has his face exposed which is fine so we get to do pretty simple skin so the base coat for this is going to be vallejo game color pale flesh because I like it, it already starts us on that sort of skin color. And then we'll be using a contrast paint once it's dry to tone it in a little bit more. So we'll just give a, a bit of a shake and then we've put some onto our wet palette here. So as before, dipping my water or dipping my brush into my water, taking some of the paint onto the brush, making sure we don't put too much onto the brush. And then we're just going to quickly base coat his face. Not too worried about hitting his hair or anything like that at this point. But I am going to ignore the open mouth. That darker color in there will serve us better staying the way it is for now. And what we'll do is come back later and give that a second coat of that paint. We'll probably do that off camera because our next stage is going to be moving on to another uh, Vallejo color. This is Vallejo model color, oily steel. And we're going to be using that for all the silver metallic details. So we're going to be doing the inner edge of the shoulder guards. We're going to pick out all the rivets because I like the, the look of steel rivets being exposed. So we're going to pick out all those rivets as well. The bottom of the feet, the fingers of each of his gauntlets as well, and just any other details that we feel that we need to. So put some of that onto the palette now. I'm gonna take a bit of a smaller brush. I'm using a double zero brush for this step. Again, just making sure the point is pretty fine. Yeah. We'll start with a rivet, so we'll look at the thigh here. And this is a good exercise for any beginner painters there. 
just to figure out how you can hold the model comfortably and just <clears throat> touch the top of each of these rivets just to give them a little bit of colour. You don't want the paint too thin for this step either because it could risk running. With the skin and the silver applied, we did go in and do a second coat of the uh, the skin paint. As you can probably see on camera, it's quite bright, it's quite pale. It's a good thing because it is pale flesh after all. However, we're going to move on now and start to dull that down. And we're going to be using another contrast paint. And for this one, we're going to be using Gilliman Flesh, which is a nice sort of pinky red tone. Quite a an easy, basic way to do the skin. So let's uh, get a brush and let's get some paint on our brush. And what I want to do here is apply it not too heavily, but just enough to shade the skin. And as you can see, it gives a fairly decent skin tone. And this is where I was saying not to put any paint into his mouth because we're just going to fill that with the contrast paint as well. Uh, not that it's going to make much of a difference here, but yeah, anything, anything is better than just black, I guess. So just apply this real quick take it down to the collar make sure we haven't missed any bits like around the back of his ear the back of his neck check the other side to make sure the same thing and that's basically all we want to do to the skin at this stage so we'll be going in once that's dry we'll be going in and painting his hair and his mustache as well and uh, i think maybe a, a blonde or a dirty blonde maybe will will work for him so with that done we're going to move on to a another wash step and for this one we're going to be using Null Noil which is a black wash from Citadel. This is going to wash everything we've currently painted except for the head because we have other things to do. I'm doing this at this stage just to show you the, the logic behind it. If we Null Noil everything we've done now we're going to be painting the lightning and we want it to retain a real brightness to it. We want it to have a proper good high contrast uh, in comparison to what he's wearing and what he is in general because it's it's light essentially we're trying to paint and we want him to have a duller contrast but we want to keep the lightning nice and bright. So we're null oiling the entire miniature leaving out the lightning obviously but even then it's going to be base coated anyway. So I have a, I have a bit of a larger brush here uh, a size 2 brush. It's an, one of my older brushes. I just kind of have it around for when I come to do uh, large wash steps and stuff like that. And we're going to be applying this all over the, the model and just being careful not to hit any of the details we've already done. And what this will help do as well over the contrast paint, I've probably said this before, um, but it adds a bit of extra depth to contrast it makes it look a little less chalky in places it dulls it down and helps accentuate all the shading work that's happened uh, in the priming and the zenithing step it also lets us define uh, the shadows a little bit more and you can already see even as the, the wash is wet we're getting a lot more of a, a a very interesting blue it's not overpowering as it is usually with just being contrast paint but because we're now putting something over it it's dulling it a little bit, but deepening it as well. So we're going to go over this. And when we come back, we're going to look at his hair and then begin to look at uh, our lightning and our, our glow effects. With the null oil dry and the uh, contrast paint on the face done and also dry, we can have a look and see just how much that has changed uh, the the depth of the blue that we're working with. Now, it's obviously dulled it a little bit, but it's not too bad. He's still primarily blue, he still quite look, looks quite interesting. So we're going to move on to first his hair, and for his hair we're going with Vallejo Model Color Flat Brown. We're going to not go blonde, we're going to go a little bit of a brown. Um, I think I've painted too many uh, blondes recently, so I figured we would change that up a little bit. And as before, I'm going to take our brush and put some water on it work it around the palette a little bit and then we're going to give his hair a coat of the brown. So again because I have it thinned on the brush we may want two coats. It's just a case of just carefully getting it in down onto the model and then seeing what it looks like when it's dry and if we think it needs another coat then it needs another coat. 
So not a, not the biggest deal. But we want to make sure we have it down and then we can move on. It's got a very defined hairline there as well, makes it a bit easier. So with that now done, we can let that dry. And while that is drying, we can begin the first step of painting our lightning. And for that, we're going to be using a Citadel Air Color, which is White Scar. We're going to be giving all the lightning a coat of this, which is quite a thin paint because it's designed for airbrushing, but it'll work well for the purposes of uh, painting our lightning in. So again, I'm going to dip my brush into some water, put some down onto the palette. And this is just going to be a case of quickly going over all the lightning detail to brighten it up. So with the lightning now painted white, or roughly painted white, we're going to move on to a little bit of a dry brush. And if you've not used a dry brush before, or done one before, we'll quickly slide this little piece of um, kitchen roll in here. And we're using a Citadel dry brush, one of the, um, oh, what are they called, the fancy ones? <laughs> the uh, synthetic bristle ones. And for the paint we're going to be using, I'm using an old edge uh, highlight paint called Baharoth Blue. It's a nice bright blue. It's a nice sort of turquoisey bright blue. So we're going to give that a bit of a shake. And then when we pop it open, yeah, we'll just move that to one side. Now, to dry brush, or to prepare your brush for dry brushing, we need to put, hang on, move that over a bit. We need to put the bristles of the brush into the paint, just a little bit. And then on the kitchen roll, we want to make some simple motions with the brush until you see barely any paint coming off the bristles. Then we go to the miniature and we're going to select an area to do this. Just up here. And all I'm looking to do here is just to do a little bit of coloration on our lightning. Not too much. Just a little bit just to catch the edges in that blue. Need to do a little bit more there, so we go back to the brush and the paint. I've been told off in my uh, Three Colours Up series about doing it properly, so we're doing it properly now. And uh, yeah, we'll just quickly give each piece of lightning a little dry brush with this. And then after that, we can move on to another colour. So that is the dry brush down. I'm going to clean my dry brush off just in my water. And if you're using brushes with synthetic bristles, you will always have a little bit of staining afterwards. So don't worry if the brush still retains a little bit of color afterwards. As long as the water that's coming off doesn't contain any paint, then you're fine. So uh, another thing I want to point out before we move on as well is that I wasn't, I'm not too precious about not touching these areas with the blue uh, kind of adds a little bit of a, a slight glow effect to it and I, I quite like how that looks. So we're going to move on to another contrast paint now and for this we're going to be going with Citadel Ethermatic Blue. Again we're trying to keep that blue sort of light turquoisey uh, colour in there and we're going to cover all the lightning with this. So I'm going to dip my brush into some water, charge the brush and then on the miniature take a little bit off. We're going to very quickly and lightly coat the lightning with our contrast paint. Yeah, and we'll just let it dry at that. There's a little excess down there that we can move. We'll let it dry at that. And while that's drying, we can move on and do another wash on his hair. And for that, move that out of the way, we're going to be going with Agrax Earthshade. This is a dark brown wash from Citadel. And all we're going to be doing here is just applying a bit of this wash to the hair. And that's just going to help shade it down a little bit. 
and bring out any of the sculpted detail that's present there. With our contrast paint now dry, we can uh, move on to our last step. And our last step is going to be another dry brush. And uh, I said that weird, didn't I? Dry brush. Okay, but whatever. Yes, dry brush. We're going to do another one. And for this one, we're going to be going back to the Citadel Dry Range for Praxetti White, because it's a good bright white to finish everything off. They do several whites in the dry range, and I think Praxetti is probably the brightest. So again, we have our little dry brush here, and we're going to work most of that paint off, which is hard to see when it's white on a white piece of paper. However, what we're going to be doing here is just moving it across the lightning. And I think we probably need a bit more on the brush than that because that's just a little too, little too little. And what we're trying to aim for here is just to pick out or brighten up some parts of our lightning. Just to make it a little more interesting. I think that is probably going to do. So we're going to talk about my varnishes real quick. There's tons on the market. Uh, Citadel do one, Army Painter do one, nearly every major manufacturer does a matte varnish of some description. However, if I can find my bottle of it, just quickly reach for it. What, I'm, what I've been using a lot recently is AK Interactive uh, Ultra Matte Varnish. This gives a very smooth, a very flat finish. And as it says, Ultra Matte, it is incredibly matte. Now, it doesn't work for every application. Sometimes you're going to want to retain a little bit of a sheen. However, I would recommend, you know, if you're a new painter, do go ahead with um, whatever company you're buying your paints from. They'll usually supply you a matte varnish that works quite well. But if you feel like you need something a bit more, have a go at AK Interactive as well. So it's, there's plenty of companies out there. Just pick and choose whatever you fancy the look of. So we're going to matte varnish the model, paint the base black, put them on a nice black background, and then we can wrap up the video and have a look at our finished model. So with the base painted, the matte varnish down, we now have Tesla ready for basing and ready to be put onto the tabletop. Now, let's have a look because from the front, he's pretty decent. That matte varnish has settled quite nicely, has given us a very nice finish. And in general, I think the lightning is nice and bright as well. But the important thing is, for you as the player, if Tesla is in your force, you're going to be looking at him from this perspective most of the time. So do we like him from the back? Yes, well, I certainly do anyway. You can let me know in, uh, in the comments what you think. But as a player, who's playing a model like this, you always want to be able to identify them quickly and have them painted in such a way that even from this perspective, even from a higher up angle or further away, you're able to tell who it is and look at yourself, look at the, the paint job you've done and go, yeah, I painted that, I like that. So the way I like to leave these uh, painting videos generally is to say that a model's never finished until you say it's finished or until you're happy uh, with the result. Now that means you can always come back and revisit this model if you want to do some edge highlighting once you've got a bit more confident or you know you can paint the eyes. I hate painting eyes personally that's why I don't do it on most of these tutorials. I always aim these videos to be for you guys the beginners, for you guys the novice painters or the people that just want something done that you would be happy to put down on a table. I like to finish these videos by saying, I'm happy to put this on the table, and if that makes me happy, hopefully you guys have taken something away from it as well. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and uh, let's look forward to the next one. Until then, take care and see you soon. Join the Global Gunslinger League and track your progress in the On Tabletop project system for your chance to win one of two Wild West Exodus bundles. See the link in the description for more details. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.